this is Daniel Smiley, and I'm going to talk about vector hysteresis in a solenoid today on behalf of Ozen Engineering Incorporation. At Ozen Engineering Incorporation, we use physics based simulation to solve multidisciplinary engineering problem uh, using the industrial leading CA technologies from ANSYS. We work on mechanical and electrical problems, and we provide engineering service for different industries. It's good to point out that also we are a elite channel partner of ANSYS. So in today's, uh, today's uh, PowerPoint, I'm going to talk about the uh, solenoid that you see in this uh, picture. And we ended up see how we can use uh, Maxwell, which is an ANSYS product to produce this hysteresis profile for this uh, armature. Today, I'm going to talk about what is magnet, uh, magnetic hysteresis, and then I'll explain the effort uh, geometry of the model, how to set it up, how to add hysteresis behavior, and post-processing. In, uh, in this section, we talk about how to have also a behavior that doesn't follow hysteresis. So, We'll show you how we have both option hysteresis behavior or non hysteresis behavior. So uh, I'm not going too deep in magnetic uh, hysteresis and what it is and how it works, but just want to have a touch base on it. On the left hand side, you see a BH curve, and the right hand side, you see another BH curve. So at the beginning, uh, when H is zero and B is zero, and nothing happened to the circuit or the solenoid or the uh, or your metal. They're both at zero. Uh, H is a magnetized force, and force are needed to make the flux line on B. So at the beginning, H is zero, and we start increasing H. As you can see, the B also increases and get to a saturation point. And after that, doesn't matter how much you increase the magnetizing force, you don't get any additional uh, flux line. So at the beginning, flux line are scattered, then gradually they become oriented. As you can see here, they're all in the same direction. That's why after that, there is no more uh, need to increase the edge because this is the most the, you can get out of your uh, material. Once edge just start decreasing, which is decreasing magnetizing force, uh, the lines, number of lines in the uh, in the flux line start getting uh, less and less, but it doesn't go all the way to zero. As you can see, it, it comments, uh, reaches uh, to this BR point. In order to make B uh, equal to zero, we need to decrease H. So let's move to this chart now. So we start from, we go all the way to A, we come at B, B point is equal to BR here. And after that, when you're decreasing the H, the B is start decreasing all the way to point C. At the point C, if you want to start decreasing H, you can keep doing that. But again, we'll get to point D, which is another saturation. So we're doing the same, we're seeing the same saturation, but in a different uh, direction. Then you can start uh, again changing the edge. It comes and hit uh, the y-axis, which is B at point E. It goes up all the way to get to the point A, which is same point that we had at the saturation again. This point A is equal to this point in this curve. And after that, uh, when you're like decreasing edge, it, it just uh, goes on this path there and never goes to a starting point again. So that's uh, what's happening in the hysteresis just in, in a nutshell. And then uh, it's good to point out that we have a different type of uh, profile. Some of them have a big area between them and some of them have a smaller area, depending on how soft or hard it is. Uh, and, that are, and they have different application, uh, different pros and cons, and depending on the need, uh, the industry choose uh, one of the other. Uh, a good uh, example here is that, you know, you see different metal have different uh, parameter. So now that we know what is a hysteresis loop, 
let's uh, take a look at the structured instruction the uh, the material the armature that we're going to cover today so the one that we're going to show you is very similar to this uh, picture here um, but it's not exactly the same as you can see we have different uh, part of this armature here uh, you'll see the armature uh, the coil and the frame which is this part in the simulation as you can see there is a symmetry in this uh, geometry so there are two ways you can use maxwell uh, to solve the equation for this armature one is that having the whole model which takes a lot of time another one is making it in a small section for instance take a look at this section right here this is a very small section of the armature but if you solve this it, it's the same for all of them because there is a symmetry here so we'll use that in our simulation to decrease the simulation time in the simulation we're going to show you how you assign the material you choose a material from the, the list of library that you have and then uh, there are two options there one is uh, choosing uh, bh curve as this another one is using the bh curve as, as described here which has the hysteresis there's a key point here if you want to use this profile the very end and the very beginning has to be exactly the same number just multiply by minus one otherwise you, you'll, you'll see a uh, error in your simulation next uh you need to uh, I'm, I'm showing these examples because uh, i'm showing these uh, slides because we're going to use them uh, in our simulation but i'm going to fast forward about it so i just want to uh, prepare you what's going on so another part that we'll do in the simulation we're just going to create a data set so this data set is created as you can see here we manually input these numbers this is set and when you have uh, no hysteresis behavior the um, profile just uh, follows the the current however when you have the hysteresis behavior the force will have a little bit change and that's as you can see there are little bit changes differences between these two profile that is because of the magnetic behavior of uh, the uh, material 